Welcome back to Tech Coaching with Ralph. So tonight, we are going to talk about the M3 U8 parser. We're going to go through a couple of things. I'll share my screen with you in a second. I hope you guys had a great weekend, though, and getting ready to start the work week. All right, so let's get into it. We're going to talk about HLS streaming, what M3 U8 manifest files are, and how all that works and then we're going to even um use an m3u8 parser to parse through a manifest file and i even have a special treat in store for everyone tonight so let's do it and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do I'm trying to get the channel to grow to share this wonderful information with everybody All right, so let's do this. All right, so here we are. Let me go to the beginning of the slideshow. So the QA project for tonight, M3U8 parser. So with the strong emergence of live streaming that's been going on, this is this is being used all the time, even though a lot of us don't know the technology behind it. But just, for instance, this live stream right now, there are so many things are happening in the background with media, with media files being uploaded from my end to YouTube and then being able to deliver it to you in chunks um, through, through HLS streaming, right? So we're going to get into that. So the first things first, let's get into the overview. So in the pre-recorded video that I released a couple of days ago, it kind of went through this, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth and we're going to do this live. So what is the M3U8 parser? It was a parser for M3U8 files. It parses the contents of an M3U8 file to a list of streams and in stream information, which can be saved as a JSON or CSV file. But what is an M3U8 file? So an uh, M3U8 file is a manifest file. What a manifest file is, it contains data about, so it can, it can contain data that has um, the sub manifest, which sub manifest can be different qualities of video that's being played. And then within those sub manifests, it, will contain all of the files that are required to um, actually be able to play the video. So we're gonna get into this a little bit more. So I'm gonna go through. So what is our agenda for tonight? We are going to find out what an M3 you file is find out about HLS streaming and we're going to find a M3 U8 file to parse and then we are going to use the M3 U8 parser in a live demonstration sounds like a plan sounds like a plan to me all right so we're going to find out what the m3a file is we're going to find out about hls streaming we're going to find out we're going to find a uh, m3 8 file to parse and then we're going to use it we're going to use the parser in a live demonstration we're going to set it up from start to finish so if you don't have your pie charms open and you want to follow along go ahead and open it up now So why M3 U8? So we got to figure out how does HLS streaming work, what the manifest file is, who uses this. And we're not going to cover this because we spoke about something in Wire and we want to actually explore the M3 U8 parser. And then we're going to see how we can find a, a M3 U8 file. 
but we can actually run it through the parser. So how do we find a manifest file? And then we're going to take that manifest file, we're going to run it through the parser. All right, so the tools that we're going to need to do this, we're going to need Python installed on our, on our computers, and we're going to also need a Python editor. I'm using PyCharm. Uh, you can use with, with whatever Python editor that of your choice, but I'm going to be using Py, um, PyCharm if you want to follow along. We are going to need the request package. We're going to need the M3 U8 parser package. The steps that we're going to follow, we're going to install the packages. We're going to find the M3U8 file. We're going to run the M3U8 status through the parser, and then we're going to validate the responses. And our desired outcome of this project tonight on this live stream is we want to successfully parse an M3U8 playlist using the M3U8 parser and validate the responses, kind of like what we mentioned before. And what benefits should we get out of this? So. If this works to our expectation, it's going to be a nifty way to validate manifest functionality. So that goes to whoever might be working in the video industry, whether, so that's people who may be working at Netflix, media companies like NBC, Fox, uh, YouTube, Hulu, like any type of, any type of um, streaming, video streaming company you're going to definitely get um, some type of benefit from watching this video and it might help you in your testing and it might be even useful to, to engineers as well, to software engineers as well, because they might, I'm sure they can make use of this, of this parser. All right, so let's get started. First, let's figure out, Let's do like this first. We're going to take this one out here and we're going to put it on top. Let's find out what HLS streaming is. And to do that, we have a website right here. Get to the top. So let's read this together for a second. What is Dash and HLS live streaming? So I don't even know what Dash is. I know what HLS live streaming is, but I haven't even heard of Dash yet. So we're going to find out together. So. Introduction, live streaming has undoubtedly become a crucial part of online media consumption. Whether you watch, you're watching a live stream of a local news network or engaging the content with content creators on a YouTube live stream, they all work using, they all work using one of the following web technology protocols, MPEG Dash, MPEG Dynamic Adaptive Streaming over HTTP, or HLS, HTTP Live Streaming, the H. L S. All right. Having said that, both protocols work in a similar fashion. That is encoded, split up into chunks, and sent to a client to view. All right. Over here. Give me a second. Bear with me. Let's just do that. All right, cool. So the first one they're going to talk about is HLS, HTTP live streaming. So what is it? It is a standard developed by Apple. A broad overview of an HLS live stream in action is the following diagram. So like we were mentioning, mentioning M3 U8 files, so it's a playlist. And it has chunk 1.ts, chunk 2.ts, chunk 3.ts. And then that is transferred over to the the browser that can actually play back this this file we're going to get into it a little bit more in depth so it says the technology in principle serves multiple playlists for adaptive bit rates so someone that wishes to access a live stream with a slower connection can still view a lower quality 1280 by 720 which is 720p stream while others with fast connections may potentially have access to a 380 or i'm sorry 3840 by 2160 4K stream. When a browser loads the player, it will parse the M3U8 playlist, read video, stream metadata, and begin to play through the chunks. Chunks tend to be a few seconds each, and they all have time markings so a player can stitch the video together. Another feature of HLS is accessibility. Video streams can contain VTT subtitle files. You may have noticed this if you used bunny.net stream 
which I haven't, which uses HLS to serve videos on demand, which a player can display on screen. As it is encoded in plain text, other accessibility features can be implemented. Even automatic translation can be used for other languages. You know what? That sounds familiar. When on Udemy, they have those are auto generated captions for the video. So I wonder if that's uh, if that's what that is. I have to look into that. Let me make a note about that so I can look into that a little bit more because that is very interesting about accessibility. All right. All right, so basically what this is saying is it has all the files that are needed to construct the video together. And then when with the manifest file, it says which order the files go into. And as you need to change your, if you need to change qualities, so like a low quality, a standard quality, uh, HD quality, and so forth, um, based on the manifest file, it can, it'll, it'll change for you. So we can, we'll, we'll see that, we'll see that in action. And while we're here, although we're talking about the HLS, we might as well look into the, let's down a bit. We might as well look into the dash while we're at it, because I've never heard of it. I'm curious to, to hear about it. So as, so for dash, dynamic adaptive streaming over HTTP. As mentioned previously, Dash works similarly to HLS streams. MPEG Dash was developed by a consortium of companies and is internationally recognized as the de facto standard of live, for live streaming. These videos, however, are not natively supported on certain platforms, namely iOS, of course. So platforms often end up supporting HLS powered streams for both, for both due to platform compatibility. With Dash streams, though, a player client side will request a playlist, a text file that contains a list of chunks. Similar to HLS, those chunks are used in conjunction with, with the playlist to form a stitched or uninterrupted video that can be, that can range from a variety of lengths. Any length is supported. Videos can be hundreds of hours long. Hmm, interesting. That explains some of these 10 hour live streams that we see on YouTube from time to time. All right, let's finish up this article. Other uses. While HLS DAT and DASH are often referred to as live streaming protocols, they can also be used for regular video streams. When used with a suitable transcoder that can split these chunks, HLS and DASH can, can enable adaptive bitrate streaming to any video on demand. Furthermore, with wide browser support and a plethora of players to choose from, live streaming has, be has become easier than ever. HLS and MPEG Dash offer benefits to end users with improved streaming performance. While no ancient unsupported Flash or any other plugin player is required to view a stream, all of these technologies work in conjunction with HTTP compression and other web technologies to deliver a pleasant user experience. And if you are a Q engineer, we know that the most important thing to us is the pleasant QA experience. So. That's what we are always going for, um, making sure that there are as minimal bugs as possible and that the users are having a great experience. And to finish this article up, this goes to streamers as well. With HLS natively supported in OBS, a very popular application used to manage and create video streams. Hmm, sounds very familiar. Streamers should have no trouble using this technology and the standard and the standardized protocol can easily be processed on ingesting on ingest endpoints, Twitch, YouTube, etc., and transcoded for adaptive bitrate streaming. And I didn't even know this part. So this this is just opening up a whole world of information for me already, because these are some of the tools that I'm using, and I'm getting even more information just right now on this live stream. I'm getting this information, so that's awesome. All right, so back to our agenda. Find out what an M3U8 file is. All right, so do a quick search.
What is an M3U8 file? A file with the M3U8 file extension is a UTF-8 encoded playlist file. M3U8 files are plain text files that can be used to store the URL path of a streaming audio or video and information about the media tracks. And it says VivSync supports M3U8 file format for playing stream, streaming 360 videos. All right. So we have a general idea of what it is. But honestly, if I, if I read this, this doesn't say anything to me. It just tells me that it's a file that for a playlist, I don't know what a playlist is. So I think the best thing that we can do is go find an M3U8 file. So in order to find an M3U8 file, we need to find a video that uses an M3U8 file. And I just happen to know where I can find one. So let's do this. Where are we on our agenda? We are find an M3U8 file to parse. So if we go here to here, and this just happens to be me. Oh, well, would you look at that? This was my GC competition from earlier this year. The Pan American Championships. I have not watched this myself, and I am not going to have everyone sit here and watch this tonight. We're going to go find the M3U8 file. Let's do that. Let's find the M3U8 file. So we're opening up our network tab, and we are going to go, we're opening up the the developer tools. I'm going to go to the network. And we are going to start this over. And this does not look good for me. Oh my God. Let's refresh the page. Right here, I'm filtering for M3U8 files. Page is refreshing. This is getting the M3U8 file from Flow Grappling. We're going to use that so we can parse, take that through our parser. Come on, brother. Why are you getting stuck with me? Stuck in side control. You're not helpless and defenseless. Jesus. It's moving. All right, this is taking so long to load. My internet work with me here. We're going to try this. We're going to try it this way. We are going to go to the home page. Click on this. Now, as it loads, we should have the M3U8 file. There we go. Popped up over here. So we have playlist. And let's just stop this right here. No one wants to see that, right? All right, so here we go. We got our playlist here. And we will come back to that. So let's do let's do this. I think there's a M3 U8 Chrome extension that we should be able to parse it. We don't want a downloader, we want a parser. 
if we can find something like that. That way we can actually see how the M3 rate file looks. Let's check this one out. What's this? Let's see. So then this is part of like the research that we do. See if we can find out parser for the Chrome browser. If not, there are other ways to do it. So we're going to do this just to save some time. I'm going to take this file. And what I can do, I can link a parser or like as a Chrome extension into the, into the description. And then you can always install that if you want to see it. We're going to go here. And let's go to I'm saving it somewhere on my computer. I'm gonna save it to my downloads folder. And then I'm gonna open it up with a text editor. Let's open it with what a text edit. All right, so This is how, so this is, this is how this M3 rate file looks. Uh, this is, it's going to have, um, so this one has the different data that's being required to load the, so this has the different data that is, that is to load, um, to be able to play the video files. And, so here we are. So this is so this is like how uh, M3 rate file is constructed. When we get to the parser, it'll give us some more details. And then there's like a whole documentation on, on the protocol for M3 rate for HLS streaming. So this is like the requirements for this is the requirements for of how it should be constructed in order for it to be able to to successfully play back. So let's keep going a bit. Because there were some different ones in here. So let's see what's all in here. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a look. Let's look at these two. All right. I'm going to open this into, I'm going to save that file as well. When investigating, you know, you, just, you always want to see, like, what's going on. I mean, that's how you learn. All right. So then the, there are, so these are the segments that they were talking about in the article. So media.ts is a video file. All right. Let's see here. It has all the segments in here. Cool. Event status live. All right. So cool. So let's do this. Now that we've seen what the what's the content of the M three rate file, uh, we have um, we might not we might still not know exactly how it works, but we know what it's being used for, and that is a little more than we knew previously. So. Let's go to, so if we look at here, so this one is chunk, this file name is chunkless underscore VO underscore 167, a bunch of numbers, right? Do we see that in here? So 
So these are calling audio files. So this is calling this file over here. Okay, cool. So let's let's keep going. All right, so we found our M3 rate file to parse. And now let's get to our demonstration part. Here comes the fun stuff. So let's pull up PyCharm. And we are going to create a new project. Let's call it uh, TCR M38 parser live stream. Let's go with that. Okay, so we have our project created. And we are going to first things first. Let's expand that. We don't really need the browser right now. Make sure you have your file path to the M3 right um to the manifest file saved somewhere. And we're going to do it two ways. We're going to do it one with the local file on our computer, and then we're going to do one with uh, we're going to do it one with the URL, and try both ways out. That way, we have a variety of ways we can do it. So let's go ahead and create a new let's create a new package first, like I guess. Like we said in the other video, we always want to, since I'm a QA engineer, I always go with creating test cases. So I'm creating my test cases package, and then I'm going to create a Python file, and I'm going to call it test m3 u8. Actually, I'm going to call it test low wrap. M3 U8. Let's say we were um, two engineers for Flow Grappling and we wanted to test uh, the video quality video playback. We would we can go ahead and create a test this way where we're going to, for example, let's call it test Flow Grappling M3 U8. If I was working there, I wouldn't put Flow Grappling part in the name, but for as part of the name, but for you know demonstration purposes, so we can know what we're working on, we're gonna call it that. And now we have our Python file. So now actually let's, let's keep this side by side. Close this up a bit. Go like that. And we can do this. So we have our presentation on one side and we have our high term on the other side. So let's get to work. So what do we need to be able to do this? So it said that we would need um, the request package and we're gonna need the M3U8 parser. Let's go ahead and install those. There's a variety of ways to do it. You can do it through a pip install. When I'm using PyCharm, I like to go just through this packages areas. So that way I can search for the available packages. So first one we're going to do is requests. It's probably like one of the most popular, probably one of the most popular um, packages there are. So, so we can make um, our API calls. Let's install that one. And that one is now installed, and we're going to install M3U8. And is that the one? 
Yes, this is the one that we want. So M3, wait, we're going to install that version 3.5. Install that. And now we have our two necessary packages installed. So we are going to do, what we're going to do, we're going to import our packages into our file, import request. Now we're going to import M3 U8. Awesome. Now, if we look at the M3 documentation. So we import M3 UA. We did that already. And then it says, so you're going to create a variable. Name it playlist, but you can name it whatever you want. But we'll call it playlist for this one. And then you're going to use M3 load from wherever we're getting the video from. And then from there, we're going to, we'll, we'll follow this to get started, right? We're going to print playlist.segments and then playlist.target duration. So let's just, I like to always, like when I'm, when I'm learning a new library, I like to I just always start with their example to see, to see it work. And then once I see that it works, then I can start exploring some more and doing different, um, and start doing different, uh, scenarios and exploring more. But the first one is getting, the document like what's documented to getting what's documented to work and then you can and then you know that you can go from there right so let's just follow along and then after we get that then we'll start to explore and delve into other areas right and then we can even write an actual automation scenario so let's call it playlist or for fun let's say ralph gets destroyed BJJ playlist. Not cool. M3 UA dot load. Close your parentheses. And now let's find our manifest file again. And here it is. Let's take this one. Copy that. Link address again. And let's go in here. Do single quotes matter with the single quotes and it's working all right so now we're going to do print playlist or <laughs> very long it probably gets destroyed in bjj playlist very funny. All right, we're going to do segments. Now we're going to do the second one, print playlist dot, oops, not platform. Ah, we're, yeah. Every time. I always have to remind myself of that, don't I? All right, target. Let's see, playlist dot target duration. Let's see if that comes up with any, any suggestions. And let's give it a play, see what we get. Right. SSL certificate verify failed. Interesting. Let's see what's going on here. SSL failed. Unable to get. Local issuer. What does that mean? See, you're always figuring something else out. So now, like I said, we always want to run it. We always want to run what's given to us first so we can see if it works. And because then you might end up having to troubleshoot something that you weren't even expecting to use. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the requests 
let's call this uh m3 u8 response equals request yeah so and this is how i do this is how i do my troubleshooting right when what i want to happen doesn't happen then i have to figure out why and then i get pretty addicted to it and i just go down this rabbit hole so what i'm doing is i'm going to do user request to do a get and i'm going to paste that url that has a manifest to see if um to see what response i get if i get a if i get a like a 200 response then there's something that's going on in here if I get a failing response and there's, there's something that's happening before, like trying, like why you're trying to get the manifest. So let's say M3 U8 dot status code. We'll just do an assertion. Assert M3 U8. Uh, status code is equal to let's say 200 i'm not sure exactly what they're going to send back usually it's going to be a 200 but let's find out and we go to that's code let's give that a string and we're going to go here Paste that in here and let's give it another run, see what we get. Let's put that. Oh, it is getting a two hundred at this step. Is, is is getting past this step. So if I go here, so it got past here. So what I like to do as well is print m3 u8 response and do it this way. Uh, string that is code. I have to change that setting. m3 u8 status code. If I run that. I should have a printout that says status code to it. So this is working fine here. Something's happening in here when it's trying to, well, it's working fine here. Something's, work, something's happening in here when it's trying to load the manifest directly from this cloud front URL that Flow Grappling is using. And so let's do a little bit more investigation. So let me close this out a bit. Let's expand this. Let's see what error that we're getting. And I thought this was going to be a short night. Look at that. Our first try, we have an error that we need to troubleshoot. The life of a QA engineer in the flesh. We're unable to verify, to verify, unable to get local specific. All right, so let's look at the documentation, see if there's anything talking about that. So we're doing exactly what they say, m3.8.load. Let's see what they say. Port it tags. There are cases where a segment is given for a given key is important if it's possible to retrieve a list of segments encrypted with one key via by key method in the segments list. Example, no encryption. So, And this is failing at like that. Hmm. 
Let's troubleshoot a bit. The load is well. Why is that? So let's try something real quick. This is, this is another way of troubleshooting. So we know that based on the documentation, we can do You have, you can load it from a URL or you can load it from as a string or text, right? So let's try both ways. So let's do this. We're going to here instead. And let's print out. Let's say M3 U. A concept. And now we're going to do P print or pretty print. And then we're going to pretty print that M3 U8 response dot. Let's do, well, I guess you don't need pretty print for text. I'm just going to do regular print. And let's run that. You know, the bottom's going to give us an error, but that's okay. Let's see if it was able to print out the content. Of, all right, so it was able to print it out. So now let's do this m3 so let's call this route gets stored in ejj local only equals 3u8 dot response dot uh nope it's not what i want dot load loads and then we're going to load the m3 u8 response dot text now let's say we do print business word and local segments and let's do print rock is destroyed target duration and let's come these out for now we don't want the results being the result skewed being interfered with failures and passes. So run that. And what did we get? So let me comment this out. So we don't get mixed. We can get the same thing twice. So M3 UA content. Oh, so that's that. And nothing is being printed out over here. So no segments. Okay, so why are there no segments then? There might be no segments because that is not the file that contains the segments. It might be the very. So let's find out. Let's do print. F string is this file the variant? And we are going to say Ralph gets destroyed local dot. What are we looking for? Is variant. And what is a variant? So the variant manifest is the one that will contain the manifest for your different qualities of video that you're able to offer. So that could be your stand, your low definition video for like go on 3G connections. And you can get your standard definition videos. Or like, you know, mobile devices, especially if you're like either rural areas still running on like 4G and you start getting your, now you get your typical HD connection working on 720p. Then you can get your um, 1080p and then it goes up from there, right? There's all the way up to like 4K and everything. So in this, so there's going to be a manifest that's going to tell you all the different available manifests that there are. And then those variant manifests or those um, definition specific manifests will be the ones that serve you the, the um, manifest that has all the segments in there. Right? So let's comment this out then. Cause we need to, let's find out, is this a variant manifest? Mm -hmm. 
bing, 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 bing. So that's why we weren't getting any of the segments. I said, because this is a variant manifest. What do we do with the variant manifest then? Because we still want to get all of the video files for this validation. So let's see what we got. Let's say dot. I guess, so let's see what playlist does, right? Let's do that. What playlists are in this variant manifest? What's the next line? To the end. Now this is good. So we're asking what playlists are in the variant manifest file because you know, this is a variant manifest, so there should be playlists that are part of it. Close that. Let's give it a runny run run. And we get some data. So these are all the manifests that are inside the variant manifest. So we have, so the resolution 1280 by 720, 960 by 540, 800 by 450, 640 by 360, 480 by 270. So these are, so these are the different, um, these are the different qualities of video that this manifest offers. Oh, I'm gonna have your water. All right. So now, now that we have this, what can we do with that? So what we can do is we can loop through this playlist and store the we can store the manifest um files. So we can store we can store the quality manifest in a in a list, right? And then we can work out with that. So let's say we do. Give it a try. Enough talking about it. Let's do it. So we see that there are one, two, three, four, five. Very manifest, right? So what if we do, do a loop? Or Quality manifest in get this right now dot playlist print you want to print quality manifest I just print this one up for now, see what happens. Let's do, let's do this. Um, also print, let's name this quality manifest. And then we'll just give it the, Jesus Christ. We'll just give it the, You get F string. We'll just make it the position in the list. So we can do rabbit destroy dot playlist and then quality manifest. Give it a runny. Did I do wrong with that? I always have trouble with this part. All right. So we want All right, this again. All right. So we have this the playlist and then we want the position of it. So let's 
let's see here. This. When in doubt, Google. All right, so let me see. I just, I'm always Googling because I, my memory for remembering all this QA stuff and all this code stuff. All right, Python for loop. That works. Okay. Numeric. What are these variables that these people use? They get so complicated for. Okay, let's try this one then. There's a better way to do it. There's another way to do it, but that's what we found, so. How do they do that? Enumerate these class. Not really what I wanted to do, but let's see what happens with that. It's my first time trying this one. Let's see what happens. And then enumerate print. I don't know if that's gonna work. Might just have to skip this for now. Let's see. See what happens with that. Hmm. Let's give it a let's give it a go. Oh, look at that. So that part did work. Let's see what we do. Not really what I was looking to do. But we get to just not spend too much time on this part. So when we do this, we get rid of this enumerate. My own shortcomings. All right, so we have where it's breaking down the different quality manifest inside the playlist. So now if I just want to get the URL, URI. So in the in the manifest, these are the different um, URLs for the different qualities that we have. So 300, 3,000, 1,700, 1,500, 300. These are like the paths to it, like where they're saved. If I want to get the absolute URI, do that as well. But that's going to give me the whole path. So not in this case because there, there can be there cannot be absolute URI with no base URI set. Interesting. So what is the base URI? Right, so let's let's keep playing around with this, investigating this. No, so there's no base URI set in here. Interesting. This is very interesting. See, when you pick some, you pick a random manifest to go through, you always learn something new. Right, so there is no base URI. So I do the URI here again. I run it. I'm getting the path. But this should be similar to this. Or not, actually. 
should. Yeah, right, asking box. So let's say we have. Let's see. Keep looking through here. So inside the quality manifests, we have URI, which is what we have here. We have the base URI, which you're saying there's none set. Absolute URI. Media. Let's see what's media. All right, so media would have. So it gives you back the list. Let's see what's in me. All right, so that's just the list. Wish you could see what's inside though, but all right, cool. No worries. Let's see what stream info is. I'm sorry, let's turn that one off because information being reported is messing with the results that we want to see. Let's run it again. All right, so the stream info is the stream info is telling us the bandwidth that's supported, the resolution. Okay, okay, so we're getting somewhere. Let's see what else we got. What else is in here? We have media. Let's just print them all out. So let's say media. So we got media and let's do stream info and then print manifest that stream info and let's give that a one. All right, so for media there was there was nothing that was in there, so well, not nothing, but not something that we can read. Let me see something. Let's do zero. And then, nope. All right. Some further investigation on that to be done. So we have stream info. What else we have in here? I'm not sure if we can use there. So let's see what this does. Let's see if that gives us anything. Nope, no, it doesn't give us anything either. A lot of this stuff is like when you're running a new a new package or library, it's a lot of trial and error. If you expect everything to work off um, from your first try, you are yeah, in for a rude in for a rude awakening, my friend. We we do trial and error. We try. We gotta figure this stuff out. And so it's gonna say there's no base URI. I know why there's no base URI because we are. This is this is how this is how you think through things, and this is how you you get these revelations, right? We are not getting it from straight from the M three eight file path. We had to get the text. So let me show you here. Because we went this, because we had to, because we're working on it through this way. That's why we're not getting any of this information here. However, if we if we get it to work through this way then we should be getting that information so that that makes a lot of sense to me now so let's um go 
let's say we get as far as we can with this very with this method right here totally fine so let's try to now that we know that the m3 parser is working as is expected let's see why this one isn't working you know so we go so going through it going to this through the request works and going through the browser works so why isn't it working here so let's comment well we can we don't have to comment it out oh we should comment it out so we can keep it clean Let's run it again, see our error again. So it's giving us a SSL certificate verify failed. So when we get this type of error, what is the first thing that we do? Hmm? Ah, you got it. We Google it, of course. And I'm probably going past Stack Overflow just to get back to Stack Overflow, but that's totally fine. First one says, so a lot of times like you're not going to get the same exact issue that the person was posting is getting, but you get an idea of how you could resolve it. So let's see here. Yeah, have Python 3.6, I don't know if I'm getting it. And trying to connect, probably because Python has, has no certificate SSL and can validate any SSL connection. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not, it's not the DA part, so it's probably my computer. All right, let's see what we can do. When calling SSL context constructed directly, cert none is the default. It does not authenticate with other peers. If you want it to work for now, for some other reason, you can do the following. You can import SSL as well. See this is highly discouraged. There's also a discouraged fashion via monkey fashion, which you don't see in Python. And by default, we create in. But if you want it to work now, for some other reason, you can do the following. I'm going to try this so we can get it to work because it says only for gangsters and I have a hoodie on right now. Yeah, I'm close enough. All right, so let's do this. We are going to inside of our Python. Let's look for SSL. Let's see if I install SSL, what happens? All right, so that is installed. I think it's installed, let's see. Are you installed? No. 
Oh, error installing package, boy. Hmm. All right, so this is this one through Pip then. I don't know why it's not installing through Python. The terminal. Pip. Install. Can I find version that satisfies the requirements of SSL version? Hmm, that is interesting. They're not getting SSL installed. Why not? Let's try import. I get errors here. Oh, no errors. See what happens. So we got import SSL. Let's give it a run, see what happens. All right, still getting the same error. So let's try. Or are they using this variable context for? Equals. All right. What do we got going on now? Let's see what happens. Give it another run. You can put this on top of this one. Take care of that good stuff first. And give it a run. I didn't ask this to error. Okay, so let's say we do. Because with this error, that is preventing us from being able to parse through this manifest. I wonder, let me try something real quick. If I were to take this and I just take out the S and the HTTPS. Ah, let's try that. Let me try it without the HTTPS. What do we get? Oops. Let's see what happens with that. And then can you progress? So we can always figure out the HTTPS part another time. I'm still trying to use the HTTPS part. Let's do I'm gonna troubleshoot a bit. Take this URL to the browser. With the control tools on. Put my network tab open so I can see what's going on. Let's do that. I don't tell me. 
redirected. Can you write to the HTTPS? Yep, sure did. All right, give me one second. I'll be right back. I need to get some to drink. All right, so this is where we are. All right, so I have Python 3.10, So let's say we do Python. So error for so this is the error for URL lib request .py. I was looking at this isn't uh, so this isn't the session straight straight wrong, but I'm putting it here because this guy is top movie doctor. So loose chase if you have to yeah. If you have Python 3.6 on OS X, you're getting SL. You're trying to connect to the HTTPS site, why? Because Python 3.6 on OS X has no certificate to go and can't validate any SSL connections. This is a change for 3.6. Require they post it install. Hmm. You may have used it. Install sources. Install certificates.command, which first installs Python certificate. On the version of Python, there's more documentation about this. We have directly run this. Not three point seven, but R. Let's see what this does right here. I started it last time, but let's go we'll check. Let's do that.
All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to do some more investigation on this part right here because this is for Okay, that's not exactly what I thought. Terminal. Zero. Let's try it this way. Because, yeah, 3.10. Let's try letting that come out 3.10. Go back and put this as 3.10. All right. Let's try. So sometimes you have to try like a bunch of different, um, it's like different variations to find the right solution. Not that one. So let's take that out. Yeah. So, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Cause we're not getting that error anymore and we're still able to go through the m3ua.load but we know that it's a variant so let's say we do we're gonna do the same thing we did up top actually before we do that let's print out the content like we did to make sure that this is working now we're in business okay so uh, what we're going to do here, we are going to, can you see how we're able to like figure some things out like live on the fly? Uh, came across this so issue, like, oh, well, we need to find a solution for it. And so we did. All right. So now let's do rent. This is right. Variant, so we know that's true. So now we're gonna say we know we know that that one is variant, so we're gonna do this. Um, or quality manifest in obvious asteroid playlist dot playlist. Right. So now we're going to print out the quality manifest in each. All right. So now let's say let's get the the URI, the base URI for you. Hmm. Here we go. So now we got our base URI. Well, we could, we couldn't get. Remember, we couldn't get that earlier because we were pulling in that file locally. So there is no base URI for that um, JSON text response. But for the, we're pulling in the, the manifest file through um, the, the HTTP, through the URL, we are able to get the base 
URI. So if we do absolute URI, and now we get the whole path for the M3UA file, right? Perfect. So now that we have that, how about we go through, what about if we go through um, to get the segment, the actual segments from these M3U8 files, right? So let's say we do this. What would be the best way to do this? All right, so let's say we say quality manifest URIs equals and they are equal to the uh, empty list, right? And now we say we're going to add. Let's say we say quality manifest URIs dot append. So when it takes a when it goes through this loop, it goes to the quality manifest and it gets an absolute URI for that and it adds it to this quality manifest URI. All right, so these five qualities should be added to our quality manifest URI. Got it? Got it. So now we're going to run that first and see what happens. And I want to print out my quality manifest URI. So let's print that out. Take this out. And let's see if we can get a list with our five manifests. All right, here we go. I wonder if I, I wonder if how it prints a list out with pprint, just so it can look better. All right. Give it a runny run run. All right, so now we have now we have a list that has the manifests in them, the quality manifest. So now we can always go through that list and get the segments from there, right? So what I'm saying is we have this list and we can say, okay, for playlist in quality manifest URIs. Now I'm thinking on the fly. Let me a little bit of trial and error here because I'm thinking on the fly about this. So let me see if I print playlist. Dot No, that's not right, because that's a list. Mm. I'm thinking, what would I do? Let me try this. I don't think that's going to work, but. I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a run to see what happens. Yeah, str object has no attribute segment. Oh, let's do this. Uh, no, wait. Not do that. Let's try this. And then, uh, and then we do quality. Uh, that's what I was supposed to do up top. Now <laughs> it always comes back to you at some point. A little too late, but it's all good. So, 
I like to write some code to see what happens when I run it. And then before I Yeah, it's maybe not working right for me here. And the object is not aired. Let me see if I do. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, say this. Oh. Let's get rid of this one. I'm not doing this right. So, we have. Get rid of this over here. Body manifest. Sorry, get rid of that. Let's say let's print out quality manifest in here. So, we got the actually URI already. Okay, this is what we got. I didn't print anything out. That's why. Like, when I where, where did my information go? Right, so, we got that. So, we got these URLs. And what we want to do is we want to get the. Wait. So, what we're going to do, we want to get what's inside of these, right? So, from in here, which I'm sure we could do it through the list as well, but for the sake of time, we can always revisit the stuff that we weren't sure about, but I want to get. Get this to work. So we're gonna do m3 u8 dot load, and we're gonna get the this right here. And we're gonna do any manifest dot stream info, and then so that way it's gonna print out the stream info for the for that manifest and then it's gonna go load from the from this and we're gonna say print so let's name this playlist and now we're actually at the playlist and playlist Let's print the playlist. Let's just do this for now, just to see what we get, right? So what we're doing is, let me take this out for now. We don't need this right here. So we're saying, get the quality manifest in the playlist, and then um, print out the stream info for the quality manifest, and then load the load the absolute URI these into the M3U8 parser. And let's see what we get. All right, so we got playlist here. So let's go. We're getting something and we want to go. So we do playlists. That's the case, we'll change the name. You don't want that type of naming convention. It becomes very difficult to understand. So nothing is coming in here. Oh, let's do segments actually. We want to do segments. Because the playlist is what we are um gathering up here. So now that we are we've already went through um the playlist, now we want to go through the segments. So let's see what happens. We should see what we get. All right, here we go. We're getting the we're getting the actual segments and we're getting the stream info. All right, just so for your visibility, let's take the stream info out and now you just get a list of So you got the segments with the information. So let's do All right, so here we go. Let's go for here. Let's get the base URI. 
now we should get the list of segments. Ooh. Unreadable attribute. All right. Let's see what we got. What do we get with this? All right. So we get an. So we're getting a list of all the segments that belong to. So this is for the first one, first quality, second quality, third quality. All right. So here we are. So we're so we've been parsing through this file now. Let's see if there's anything else we'd want to see in here. Let me see what else do they have in here other than segments. So they have media variant. So the this time the variant should be false. Let's make sure of that. All right, false. So we know these are not variants. So great. We see the TS files coming in as well. So we know they're not variants. Oh, th this is a good one to see. Data is a good one to see because it puts um it puts the whole um manifest file into like a dictionary format where you can be able to query that for information that you need. All right, so here we go. Let's see here, data. So we have the data as a dictionary. And then from there, like when it's a dictionary, you can say, we're not gonna do that in this case, but you can say like, I wanna get the first iteration of it. And let's see. We listed out the segments. We have let's do the segments again, see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Mm, let's see here, playlist. Segments. Base URI, URI. Let's see what this one does. So that's what software exploration is though you know it is um figuring out these libraries and these different technologies so you can be able to push your team forward you know like i think we've made a lot of progress on this one tonight especially for an industry that so many people are unfamiliar with i think us making this pro this progress is going to be super helpful So let's see. Before we call it quits, let's see if there's anything I want to do. Base URI, base path. Let's do a base path that would be not clear. Something like that. All right, base path is unreadable. So we know we can read the segments. All right, so it's 11.15 here on the East Coast. I'm going to see this working before we call it a quits tonight. Let me give it a run. You know that we have this. I think what we can do we can pick up next time on this and we can finish this um 
you know, we had some investigation to do to see why the SSL wasn't working. We figured that out. Uh, we figured out about the variant manifest and um, now we're down to the part that wasn't working. We were able to get the playlist to provide us the information through the URL. So remember, we're getting stuck when we we're trying to do it through the JSON. Um, through the request where it, it gets the... gets the text version of the manifest and then it's able to parse it. But then when you want to get the URLs, we're not able to do that. So that's not really going to be able to work for us. But we did get this part to work where it's loading it through the URL. And now we just have to figure out um, a little bit more, but I think we're almost there. And then we can add some validation around it. Um, but I think for tonight, we are going to be good. So let me come back to the stage. That was good. It was that was a lot of exploring. Uh, I'm exhausted. My eyes are so tired by all that exploring, but it was fun. Like I really enjoyed doing these software explorations, figuring out um, these new technologies, and then when we when we take the time to learn this, we're able to bring it back to our team, the people that we work with in our own projects, and we're just able to move the ball forward. So, um, always continue to learn. Always continue to explore, always continue to push testing and different strategies forward. Don't be shy because um, people may not be thinking about what you're thinking about, but once they hear your idea, they might fall in love with it. So continue to share your ideas, uh, be creative, and we can be creative and then uh, we can continue to pioneer. Uh, the way for the new wave UA. All right. So it was great talking to you guys tonight. And I look forward to continuing this one with you. Also look out for the live stream. Um, most likely on Thursday night, we're going to do part three of the Python and Java Selenium WebDriver walkthrough. Hoping that it's going to be the last one of it, but you know, I'm willing to go some more if we need to, because I want us to get it right. I don't want us to just do it right now. I want us to, to do it right. So thanks again for uh, tuning in for this live stream. And I will be looking forward to talking to you soon.